Over the weekend, you may have seen Andrew Marr ask John McDonnell, the Shadow Chancellor, a few questions about one Karl Marx. Are you a Marxist? No. I believe there's a lot to Is learn. There a no or a yes? Okay. I couldn't work it no, out. Well, I tell you, I believe there's a lot to learn from reading Capital. Now, I love this interaction and the response it garnered for a few reasons. One was it revealed the utter triviality of the British media. And after all, this is just a book. But secondly, perhaps more importantly, is that Karl Marx is probably the most important political economist right now. He is the thinker, bar none, who tells us the most important things about the state of not only the British economy, but the world economy. For much of the 20th century, it seemed that Karl Marx was wrong. In the 50 years after 1927, wages went up dramatically. For skilled workers in manufacturing in the United States, 400%. For unskilled workers, 350%. It was a similar story in the UK and across Europe and Japan as well. We had a story of rising productivity leading to rising wages, which in turn fueled growth through consumption, a virtuous cycle. Here it was an economic system which worked for the many, not the few. But it's been a very different story since then. For those same US workers, real pay in 2014 was lower than it was in 1978. The gains made by working people in terms of wages, in terms of their share of the economic pie, have been in reversal, not just for a year or two, but for a decade or two. And it's not just in the US where we see this. A 2014 report by the UK's Office of National Statistics outlined a downward trajectory, decade by decade, for wage growth. The picture is getting worse as time passes by. Wages increased an annual 2.9% in the 1970s and 80s, 1.5% in the 1990s, and 1.2% in the 2000s. But more recently, it's got worse. In the last nine years, we know that real wage growth in the UK has been negative, with wages going down 10.4% almost in the last decade. And it gets worse still. After this year's budget, the Resolution Foundation said that the 2010s would be the worst decade for wage growth since the 80s. Uh, not the 1980s. The 1780s, that's right, since the steam engine and the arrival of capitalism itself. We've had wages in the US and the UK and across Europe and even parts of Asia too going down for a long time. But it's clear that this decade and the next one is where we hit a critical point. And if elites don't take that seriously, well, we've got big problems ahead. And what about GDP? Well, actually, it's a very similar story to wages. We see a downward trend decade by decade, not just in Britain or North America, but Europe, Japan as well. I remember Alistair Campbell being on BBC This Week and Andrew Neil says, Alistair, what was the best decade for British growth? And almost like a reflex action, like when the GP hits your knee with a hammer, Campbell couldn't help himself. The 80s, Margaret Thatcher. Well, Alistair, I've got news for you. It was the 1960s. The best decade for GDP growth in the OECD, those are the most advanced economies in the world, was the 1960s, which had an average of 5% over the decade. And since then, like wages, each succeeding decade has produced less growth than the previous one, with 3% growth in the 1970s and 2% growth in the 1980s. Alistair, I'm so sorry. But what about more recently? Well, with growth, it's a similar story to wages. Yes, UK wages have gone down 10% since the crisis, but GDP per person or per person working, and that's the best way to measure this thing, they've stayed flat for practically 10 years because we have a productivity problem. And Britain's not alone in this regard. In Japan, people used to say, lost decade. Well, guess what? In the last 10 years, it suffered another one. Something equally true of Italy, which hasn't seen any economic growth for 20 years. And it's those words, lost decade, which apply to ever more economies, particularly the most mature ones, especially in Europe. When you look at Austria or France on a GDP per person basis, they aren't growing and they haven't been for a long time. If there's a thinker out there who makes more sense for a world where growth and wages are on a downward trajectory over the long term than Karl Marx, I've yet to hear of him. He makes the world we live in eminently more understandable and he's never been more relevant. The elites, the establishment, the people behind our rigged economy can dismiss him at their expense because if ordinary people understand the power of those ideas in a system which inevitably will compromise their standards of living, they might begin to do something about it.